Silver and gold investors, if your bank was in trouble, do you think they would tell you about it beforehand? Today, we have a special guest, the world famous coin shop, Chris. And we're going to talk about the banks in the United States and see if we can get to a, a conclusion regarding where we think things are heading within the next few months. Chris, welcome to Ron's Basement. As always, Ron, it's good to be back, but that gold bill looks awfully sad. <laughs> He's, he'll be happy when gold hits $2,500, Chris, and you can help me uh, pull, this, uh, pull his blindfold off. How does that sound? Well, I think, I think we can leave that one to Pat, to Pat Hall in there. Yeah, exactly. So, Chris, there's a lot of heat in the banking sector. Obviously, we had that big blow up that occurred back in March or April, March and April of last year. But are the conditions again in place where we could see more troubles in the banking sector? What's your overall thoughts when when I say banks right now? I wouldn't trust the banks, Ron. I've said this in the past many times to you. I've emailed you. I didn't want to say the two name the banks that just went down, Hotland and Pac West, because I was not 100% sure. Nobody knows we're 100% sure, but um, I, I think I emailed you that back in June, and look, they both went down. Yep, you did. You did. So, I mean, you, you know, Wells Fargo just released today, Ron, tech issues, missing, missing um, deposits. You know, I would, would you like to go to your bank and you're expecting a check for, let's say, 500 bucks and it's missing and, and you needed that money or that no. currency? I mean, you, we're trusting computers. That's what people need to understand. We're, we're trusting computers from the banks and, and we're trusting the banks. And it's, if it's in the banks, it's not your money. It's not That's your called, cash. That's called counterparty risk, right? Which is which is one of the uh, many great attributes to precious metals. When you hold an ounce of silver or an ounce of gold in your hand, you have the wealth in your hand. You have no counterparty risk. If you hold one of these in your hand, right? You have counterparty risk because I'm I'm relying on somebody else being willing to uh, to give me something of value, right? That uh, for for that paper money, gold and silver have no counterparty risk. Yeah, you put your money in the bank, and what do the banks do with your money? Well, they try to invest it themselves and make a little more than what they're going to pay you in interest. It. Exactly. And now JP Morgan, Bank of America is coming out this week and saying, there's not going to be any recession now. Um, yeah. Didn't just didn't Janet Yellen just say that a week ago before and Jerome Powell don't see when he announced more interest rates, he don't see a recession. What, what, uh, uh, it, that's what's going on here on the government's working with these banks. These banks yeah, it are is, gaining, these banks it is are suspicious. Gaining, these banks are gaining in cahoots with the government, Ron, and when something does happen, they're going to say, thank you for saying there's not going to be a recession. Here's so much more money, and we're going to bail them out again, and guess who's going to pay for it? You and me. Yeah. And everybody yeah. else. I'm sorry I'm fired up, Ron, but it's the same thing happened in 2008, and they're going to put a, a Band-Aid over all this crap. That's what they're going to do, and they kick the can down the road again, and that can's getting very heavy, Ron, and Someone's going to break their foot and need to go to the hospital. Yeah, the banks, uh, the banks are are good for the money uh, until possibly at some point in the future they're not good for the money. And there's a lot of heat on the banks right now uh, from many different directions. Let's go. I, I wrote down. I have a, what I call the five pronged attack that the banks are under. Uh, number one, their deposits are fleeing, right? There's there's people, people are either afraid to keep their money in the banks, and that's kind of maybe cooled down a little bit, or people are taking their money out of the bank because they can make a much higher interest rate with a money market account at a place like Fidelity or Vanguard, uh, or buying a U.S. Treasury bond, because the Treasury bond rates keep going up and up and up. Uh, because the because the government has to sell so many treasuries. So people are trying to pull their money out of the banks while at the same time, right, 
the banks are sitting on these commercial real estate portfolios. They're sitting on bond. Uh, they had bought bonds themselves in the previous years. That, that's like prong two and three. And those, the value of those portfolios has gone down significantly, right? Most of the bond portfolios that these banks, you know, when they bought you know, long-term U.S. treasuries that were paying 1% or 2%, They've gone down in value quite a bit, so the banks are are under some serious heat right now. Well, I don't know why people would want to put their money in a money market account. Um, I, I I don't know if people really know what they're really doing. A money market account, they take that they take that cash and they invest it. And if they go, if they make bad investments, you might not get your money back too. Mm -hmm. Nothing is safe. The only thing maybe a little bit safer. That I'm seeing right now is credit unions, but still, credit unions can make mistakes too. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I trust a credit union more than a bank or a, C, a CD right now or um, a high yield savings account, whatever you want, a money market account run. Um, I got very, the, the money we I have in the bank run is just enough to pay the bills. Everything else I'm bringing to silver right now. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's the other problem the banks are having is that the money that is remaining, they're having to pay a higher interest rate on as well. Uh, oftentimes, a higher rate to their, their customers that are sticking around uh, than they're making off the bonds that they bought two or three years ago. So it's a big issue. And then the big X factor coming down the, fact, uh, down the tracks at the banks and everybody else is, what if we go into a recession, right? And and people stop paying their mortgages or people stop paying their car loans or like you and I have talked about recently, this record level of credit card debt, people stop paying their credit cards, uh, student loan payments are going to start up again. I mean, it's it's looking dicey for the banks. Well, Ron, I mean, there's, uh, I've heard, you know, there's about 50,000 cars getting repoed a day. The banks are overloaded with cars. Mm -hmm. The banks are getting overloaded with properties. People can't pay their property they can't pay their mortgage um banks are just gonna take them away yeah um yeah. You, you know i mean if we if we all went to the bank to just tomorrow on the banks would be wiped out tomorrow with cash right they, they just yeah. you know if no one you know if, if you're if they have enough for 49 people in line and you're the 50th person on well mr basement man you're not going to get your thousand bucks that you need <laughs> And I know if you showed up and they didn't have your money, then you wouldn't be able to buy your weekly supply of ding dongs, right? Oh, well, that that's right. <laughs> that's a lot of ding dongs are gone. That's when there's really a problem, right? That's when there's <laughs> really a problem. <laughs> oh, so so the solution is not to sell, I'm sorry, convert your uh, your silver or your gold into paper money and bring it to the bank. The the solution might be. Uh, might be, we're not giving financial advice, but for people that do own precious metals, you're really acting as your own bank. You're acting as your own central bank. And, you know, it's worked well for a few years, hasn't it, Chris? Silver and gold holding their value? Absolutely. I mean, over the course of the, you know, over the course of the couple of years here, we've done good. Mm -hmm. You you know, so what if it drops a dollar or two an ounce. So what if gold went down 30 bucks an ounce? You know, I mean, who cares if you're not ready to convert it back into paper? Like I'll use Lynette saying again, you you know, you want to convert it into another asset like a property. You know, people think, oh, an assets are a vehicle. No, I mean, the vehicles can last you, what, 10, 15 years if you're lucky. I mean, you know, if you drive it hard enough. But um, you you know you want property, you want to grow your own food, and you you want to get out of the system. Like she said, you own silver and gold in your own hands. The government can't see it. She yep. made that very very clear. There's and there's you, no counterparty risk if you decide whatever extent you want to hold it on your own. You are your own central bank essentially. Um, because, you know, and, and I, and I want to, I want to end with this idea. If the banks are in trouble, let's just look back over history. 
right? When we had the great financial crisis, when the tech bubble burst, any big crisis that's occurred, did they ever warn people? Did they ever give any warning whatsoever? No. Their job is to instill confidence because this thing, right, this paper is based on nothing but confidence. It's a con game, right? That's the beginning, the C-O-N, it's a con. So not that, you know, we don't know what what's going to happen. And we're not, I'm not sitting here, you know, and I know you're not either, Chris, telling people that, oh, it's going to happen exactly on this day. But if we pull our head out of the sand a little bit and look around and do a little bit of analysis, um, and again, to go back to what Lynette Zang says, she encourages people, and I do as well, and I'm sure you do as well, Chris, do your own research, come up, to your own, come up with your own conclusion. But when I do, uh, I sure as heck feel more comfortable being my own central bank than relying primarily upon another bank to store uh, my assets and my wealth. Absolutely. And there's two more things we need to talk about, Ron, if, if you don't mind. No, I don't mind. Um, I, I like to thank all the female stackers out there. You know, you know, when I see the females come come into the shop, you know, they seem, to, you know, there's nothing to hit against the guys at all. But the females seem to listen more. They're more interested, and in, you, you know, because they, as you, you know, I mean, you know, it's like the guys that you know when we get something in in the mail that we have to put together. Do we read the, the directions, guys? Let's be honest. Now we throw it on the side and your girlfriend, your wife says, honey, you need to read that. We say we don't need to read that. But before GPS has come out, Ron, we go across country trip and your wife's telling you, Ron, you need to stop and ask directions and you're being all stubborn. I ain't going to ask, but the wife's always right. <laughs> and they're right about stacking too, right? Yeah, there's definitely a growing legion of lady stackers. Uh, coming into the precious metal sector, and we are welcoming them with open arms. And they're eager to learn. And you know, even you know, some of the new guys that come in, the, the younger ones that don't have much knowledge about this yet, you know, they're kind of more hesitant. You know, and you you know, they think we're full of crap over, but um, we're trying to help everybody. Yeah. And why we're on this silver and gold? I will give you the numbers the last thirty days, Ron. We can wrap it oh, up, yeah. I guess. Yep. Um, even though silver was down on, we're actually up the last 30 days. Wow. We're up, 60, we're up 61 cents over the last 30 days. So why are we complaining, Ron? You call me, Ron. Chris, silver's down. And what do I tell you every time, Ron? I'm not worried about it. Um, so it was up 61 cents over the last 30 days or 2.65%. Gold was up $48.70 over the last 30 days. And that, that percentage came out to be 2.52%, excuse me. Platinum was up $13 or 1.42%. And our friend Bitcoin or Unicorn Fight Desert, which is made of nothing, was actually down $1,000. $774.70 or minus 5.77%. And you know, right. I'm very happy, Ron, when Bitcoin's down. <laughs> yeah, you don't, you're not holding a grudge or anything like that. Uh, nope. That's not great. At all. <laughs> that's great news that, uh, that silver and gold were up over the last 30 days. What are we complaining about? We have a lot to be grateful for. And like you said, including everyone who joined us today to talk about what's going on in the market. Be careful with the banks, guys. Be careful with what, with how you store your wealth. And uh, Chris, can we look forward to seeing you again sometime soon? Absolutely, Ron. It's always a pleasure to come back on. Always, All right. You know, I love, I love the comments. I love the viewers. Um, I love your live streams. I love your videos. Keep up the good work, man. And everybody Thanks. give this a, everybody give this a like, share, and subscribe. The more we can share this out, the more the word gets out. And that really goes a long way to get the word out. Sounds great, Chris. Thank you, sir. And we'll see you soon, okay? Amen, Ron. Thank you. See you, buddy.